watching yesterday. So February 9th, 2023, the 1230 bearish candle. So we're framing the fair value gap on the, the high of this candle and the low of this candle here. Okay. And we have buy side here. Nothing in here is really imbalanced. We have a small little liquidity pool that would be above this high, but if they're going to run that, they're going to run this. Okay. So we'll see what we got. We'll get with that. Dropping down into five minute chart. Okay. You can see how it came back down in the consequent encroachment here at 9.35 a.m. Rallied through and went back up into that fair value gap on the 15 minute time frame. I did a gradient of that 15 minute fair value gap, meaning the first 25%, the 50% or equilibrium, I'm sorry, equilibrium, which is really technically consequent encroachment of any imbalance or gap, and then 75% of that, and then the high. And you can see how we're seeing beautiful responses off of that. That's what you would expect from retail support and resistance, but it doesn't deliver it. It's too subjective, which is the reason why I thumb my nose at it, and I know it upsets a lot of you that are purists that like to use that stuff, but there's a better way of doing it, and hopefully you guys can at least see that. We're going to drop down to a one-minute chart, get right into it, and then... We'll just sit back and watch the carnage unfold at 8.30. All right, so here is 11.30. I was not with you all at that time, but notice we have a buy side and balance sell side efficiency here. Trade it back down into the upper quarter, upper quarter of that 15-minute fair value gap. The response was lovely. Went up into the imbalance here, which I mentioned. I think I failed to show you on the 15-minute time frame where that came from. Hold on. Small little gap in here. Between these candles high and that candle's low. All right, so the audio's going to be a little bit different now. I just lost the uh, the connection. It wasn't giving me any kind of feedback on my little bar here. It usually says I'm talking. So I apologize. The sound's going to be a little bit different. Don't complain because <laughs> I can't do anything about it. It's a stupid headset I purchased. It's brand new. It's not cheap. It just, for whatever reason, it doesn't want to work. So this little gap in here, I'm going to change the color of it to this so that way you can see what this is when we go over to right here so we were looking for this to reach up into it yesterday live we watched that occur and then reached into consequent encroachment and then as it hit the top end of the fair value gap i mentioned that it could probably reach up into that 15 minute fair value gap it actually went there, went a little bit further, then retraced all the way back down to the upper quadrant of that 15-minute fair value gap, which is this shaded area here. So what I've done is I've measured the range from the high to the low of that 15-minute fair value gap. You're familiar with the low and the high, and in the middle is consequent encroachment because any gap or inefficiency, that midpoint is going to be highly sensitive. But if you're bullish, you want to see it not return back to Okay, and this is for your notes. Just like when you see me talk about how I want to see a fair value gap not filled in. I want to see it remain open. Preferably, if the market can trade back down into the upper portion of that fair value gap when you're bullish, how far but not touch the consequent encroachment, the upper quadrant. You can see it hits it here, hits it here, and then rallies through. And we're going to take a closer look at that with the last hour of trading. 
because I mentioned that that would possibly be a draw on liquidity here for the PM session using the, like the last hour trading. And I'll give you some more detail about how you could use that and going forward, use the things I'm going to teach you here that tend to repeat. And I think that's about all we'll have time for because then we have to go over to the, the live for CPI. So we're going to drop down to a one minute chart. I know there's more efficient ways to do this, but I'm not a trading view all-star. <laughs> All right, so here is what we were looking at yesterday. Shift in market structure, the fair value gap here. We traded back down until I said I wanted to see it respect that rally through and take out the buy side here. I wanted 41.18, we got that. I wanted 41.21 and a half, we got that. Then I said we'd see the 15 minute fair value gap here, consequent encroachment, and I would be done if it went up to here. Then at that time right here, I said screenshot your chart, annotate everything that you see. We talked about the fair value gap that's shaded blue here and how I wanted to see this fair value gap only offer a small little move back into it. I did not want to see it completely close in. I wanted to see this one stay open because it would act as what a breakaway gap. You can see that has provided that here. If you haven't watched the live stream from yesterday, obviously you're missing out on seeing it live. It's not anything I can edit and there was a lot of people here watching it. So I want to take you into the last hour of trading. And revisit that final hour macro. And a macro is a short little list of instructions or directives for an algorithm to run. And they tend to repeat. The only time that you're going to see them not work is when we have already moved a lot in the, either the middle part of the day or right after lunch. It does whatever it was supposed to do in terms of running for liquidity. And then the last hour can be just listless, choppy, not really doing too much at all. But I want to show you how the algorithm uses certain elements of price action and trigger points for how to determine standard deviations within a small micro market structure. And I know that's a whole lot, okay, but I promise it's a lot easier when you see it discussed. Here is that upper quadrant level of that 15 minute fair value gap. Okay, remember here's that 15 minute fair value gap from the 9th of. February that I just talked about before we went down to the lower time frames. This is the midpoint of that. Okay. This is the lower quarter of it. This is the low. This is the high. And this is the upper 25% of that range. So if you would take a fair value gap and split it into four pieces equally, if you're bullish, you really don't want to see it trade down the consequent encroachment, but you're allowing that to happen, that your analysis allows for that. If it's really bullish and it comes down and touches this level here, you want to see that then support price. Do we see that here and it rallies away? Yes, we do. What is this short term high right here? If I move this out of the way, I'm just going to move it like that. This short term high, when price runs through it right there, that candle's high comes in at 41.37 and a half. This high here comes in at 41.37 and a half. That candle, when it touches it just like that, you're watching to see is the next time it trades one tick right above that price, you now have a bullish market structure shift for the last final hour of trading. We get that right there. Notice the candle didn't close there. It went above it and came down here. Look back from that candle's high all the way to the low. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. What do you see between this low? I gotta make sure I get this done. Between this high and this high here and that low. Well, you have to refer the two down close candles here. That's a bullish order block. It's one block of price action. Half of that is essentially about right in here. When this candle pierced this high here, looking back, we have this, which is what? Volume imbalance. 
Then we have a fair value gap right there. Do we want to see it trade back down inside this fair value gap once it's left it? Because we hit this one here. Why would we want to see it come back down and touch it? Because it's already done so here. Would it indicate that it's extremely bullish if it went back down there again? No. So we want to use a array, a specific element in price action that we would be more sensitive to see buying occur. Not that the buying is occurring here to send it higher. It's just that it's repricing back down to this candle's close that comes in at 41.35 even. And the difference between that and the candle's opening next is 41.35 and a quarter. So we're only talking about one quarter, one tick in difference in terms of price. So we have this volume of balance. This would be your macro. What time is this candle touching the volume of balance? 318. And this one before is 317. So what time is that? Between 315 and 345, that's your final hour macro. That's exactly what I taught you. And you're expecting what price to run to what? Buy side. We're bullish. It can go back to this level here again, which is what I gave you before we went there yesterday morning. So what's above here? Buy side. So buy side's resting there. I'm going to take these dividers off real quick because I only have a couple minutes left and I want to get through it and you can see it. So this run from this high down, remember I was teaching with, with market structure, institutional market structure, and using it and coupling it with what? Liquidity pools. If we use this drop down, this is a trigger point for running standard deviation, meaning your FIB, you anchor to the low up to this short-term high. Why that one? What's this the high prior to the retracement back down to an area where we would expect price to rally? Your standard deviations are noted here. There's your buy side. So which one are you looking for? It has to go above it. So which one are you looking for? 41.50 and a, even. So 41.50 even. And the final candle here at 1600, which is four o'clock, you want to have your position squared by then. What's the high of that candle? 4150.25. That's one tick. I taught you over the weekend that the market likes to remove mohawks, little seam, the ones that have a seamless delivery. It will not always stop right at the tick. Why? Well, you have the bid and the ask you have to worry about, much like you saw me fall victim to last week when I was trying to do a finesse and exit at 4100. I forgot what the price is now. I thought I was off by one tick. It printed the price I wanted, but it didn't give me the exit. And it came back and rolled on my stop on that final single contract. This run from here to here, okay, you have to couple that with narrative and you have to couple it with liquidity. For instance, like what's over here? You have an old low. And if it's up here, taking buy side with this run, and it's dropping down. Remember that 15 minute fair value gap? We took out what here? A short term low, meaning what? We have a shift in market structure that's bearish, the counter trend. So this is what I mean by traders that use my information. You can be buying and selling in the same day where one trader may be doing primarily one direction within a daily bias, but you can trade without a bias if you understand what liquidity is likely to provide in terms of the next draw. Small little fair value gap, it trades up into that delivers below that short-term low. Now, this may be a shift in market structure for some of you, and this one may not be because you're trading intraday volatility. The market returns back up into what? Consequent encroachment of that 15-minute fair value gap, which is that shaded area here. Remember, I changed the color. Then it rolls down and attacks the sell side here. Using the same premise here, this is a trigger to start running your standard deviations from the high to that low. Here's your liquidity or sell side liquidity. If you want to aim for something below that, what's below it? We have the old fair value gap down here. Standard deviation from high to low here. Below that low, we have this one. It hits it wonderfully. This one here is inside of the high end of the fair value gap that's shaded at 15 minute time frame. 
I know some of you are probably thinking, okay, this is getting really complicated. Trust me, it, it's it's fine. It's not terribly complicated. Just you got to see more examples of it. And then here is consequent encroachment. I'm sorry, the uh, upper quarter. And this is consequent encroachment. You don't want to see, if you're bullish, you don't want to see that level hit. You want to see it respected in the upper portion of it because it'll act like what? An institutional order flow entry drill where it just goes into an imbalance or a fair value gap and then runs higher. Well, you have a short-term low here. It stopped right at that quarter point, the upper quarter of the fair value gap that's shaded in gray here. Remember, there's four levels to it. The low, first quarter, midpoint was a consequent encroachment, 75% of the range, and then the high. So if it's going to go down to that quadrant here, which it does here, how far can it go? Using that reference point here, which is a trigger for standard deviations, the algorithm can reach as far as 4130 and a half. That would be what? Allowing for this level to be hit, but also for anybody that knows the information I'm sharing with you, their orders will fill because of the difference between the bid and the ask. So 4130 and a half, that could be a target where it reaches for what's the low over here? 4130 and a half. And then you get the run here, the shift in market structure on that candle, volume and balance to the tick, runs it up to the fair value gap I mentioned that would be the afternoon hourly, last hour trading's objective. But I wasn't in front of the charts to, talk, to be able to know about this high, but you know the pr procedure and protocol is buy sides resting above that, and then it runs right into it there. The last minute of the last hour of trading right there hammers it. 41.50, 41.50 and a quarter. So that allows the, that limit order that you would potentially have there, it would allow you to book your exit there. So anyway, that's a little bit of uh, advanced topics, just to whet your appetite because I can't spend the rest of the afternoon with you. I'm only gonna be here for a short period for the CPI number and 15 minutes after the opening. It's my wedding anniversary today, it's Valentine's Day, and it's my 18-year-old's birthday. So it's a whole lot. And we couldn't get back to home last night after his win at his soccer, but you all call it football across the pond. <clears throat> his team is a club team, and it's he's had several of his members on that team be scouted and recruited. Some of them are going to South America. Some of them are going to England to be used in teams over there. And it's just wonderful to see some of them doing so. And my son isn't that great. So I don't want you thinking I'm saying my son's going to be a pro. He's not. He's he's not that good. And he's maybe in the lower quarter of the, you know, the skill sets that's on his team. But his team members are phenomenal. All right. So we are looking at. A one minute chart. So let's take it up to a five. The discussion about the new week opening gap, I'll include this here as well. If you look at the range from this line here, this one here and here, this is the previous week new week opening gap. This is the one that we're trading off of that started this week at Sunday's opening. Okay. So Sunday's opening gap is here. In here. Sunday's first price print was here. Friday's close was here. Split the range in half. That's what we're seeing. It trades from, and remember what I taught you, new week opening gaps and new day opening gaps, they are real fair value. They are real, the real points of interest for the market to want to gravitate back to. And the market is designed and coded to do this because it allows the sentiment and interest on a large fund level for them to want to bring their orders into the marketplace, which is really the primary driver for where the market drives against liquidity. It's not retail traders, but you all learn the same things that these large funds use. Watch the buy side in here. I was watching something with the, the German 30 relative to another trader I like listening to. Tom Hugard. <clears throat> so I'm sorry what I was saying. The um, 
fair value gaps, I'm not sorry, not the fair value gaps, the, the new week opening gaps are real fair value. And they will gravitate back to the last four you want to have on your chart. Just for completeness sake and, and neatness, I'm only using the previous week. And this is something I taught. This is before you've seen it here. Some of you already started doing the exercise and started looking at how the market gravitates back to these old areas. So it's it kind of laughs in the face of supply and demand because the market's seeking these areas to reprice and allow real fair value in the marketplace. You need to stop thinking buying and selling pressure and you need to think about how the market runs to liquidity and inefficiencies because that's the only two primary functions that these markets deliver on. That's it. There's, there's nothing else to consider relative to time, obviously, but you can see how the previous week's new week opening gap we come up into it here. We gravitate around consequent encouragement. We trade down to the what? The first quarter of it from the low to the high. Look at the reaction there. Trades above it, then trades that all the way down, down through it into a fair value gap, which is reasonable because it acts like what? Institutional order flow entry drill. And then it rallies again, comes back down and touches what? The midpoint or consequent encouragement of the previous week's new week opening gap. Right here. And then we come back down again, hit it. Consolidate around the high end of the new week opening gap from the previous week. Rallies, there's your displacement. Comes back down, fair value gap, order block, old high of new week opening gap. And then we have all this movement higher. So I'm watching to see if we get that run. We only got a min two minutes or so before the carnage hits the marketplace. I really wanted to see it hit that beforehand. But now because we haven't done that, you know, it's just a matter of seeing what we get. But do not absolutely be in a market right now. If you are, you're, I mean, you're asking for it. Pain, pain and suffering coming. We'll watch on the 15 minute time frame. It'll be more impactful because one minute it'll just scroll right off my chart too fast and it won't be the same as seeing it. And I apologize. I know some of you are wanting to complain to me about the audio. It's a work in progress. <laughs> I promise it'll get better. Now, in previous observations and my own personal study of watching it, it tends to be immediately one-sidedness. Like it's a one-way street. It just smashes one way. And you really can't participate in it one way or the other after it comes. And usually liquidity providers basically pull all of the opportunity for you to really get in shortly before. Like right now, you know, it's really, really hard for anyone to, you know, in my mind, assume a position. You can do it in a demo camp, but the demo, you won't, you won't get your fill like you would want if you were trying to trade it live and gamble. <clears throat> In about 30 seconds, it's going to be ridiculous. Please, please, please do not be in this marketplace. You will lose money, guaranteed. Okay, so there you go. There's my opinion about it. No one can hear me and be enticed by taking a trade. Thirteen seconds. A whole lot of regret. Now, after the CPI hits and that it, that tsunami of price action comes in, as you can see right here, then we can look for price action to allow for your know, runs to inefficiencies. I'll trade it back to the fair value gap on that 15 minute time frame. This one here is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> what I'm looking at and what I'm really actively studying is there's a small little actual gap on the daily chart. And I don't want to toggle away from the chart now, but it's above where we are now. We're in, it'll, it's in the 4200s and such. But 
I'm not saying anything about it or implying that we're going to go higher, but I want to see how they use the CPI number today. Because if it can turn bullish today, uh, we could probably see it trade into that daily gap. And I'll try to pull it up on one of my other charts without having to come away from this one. In a second. If you look at Monday, August 22 of 2022, on your daily chart. And August 19th of 2022, those two dates for ES, you should see there's an actual gap there where there's no, no printed data at all. That's a real liquidity void. I'm looking at that as if CPI turns, you know, to a day where it's bullish, we might be looking to go up there longer term. So I'm just using that as a, a means for long-term macro analysis, not so much that that's my target for today. It's just something that I'm, I'm watching. And if I scroll down, I might be able to show it on here with a, there it is up there. So that's the, that's the range that that daily chart gap is showing but we haven't really ran by side here yet so that's what we're expecting february 2nd's high is 420850 that's the next upside draw that's this level right here. <clears throat> I'm trying to be very careful how I talk to you today because some of you just really want to push a button. So we've taken buy side out now after reaching down into that old 15 minute fair value gap. Dollar index, if you look at the low one dollar for February 9th, we are just now piercing that low. So I'm watching, do we get any kind of rejection there on the dollar that starts to move higher? And this is suggesting that maybe that buy side liquidity pool for ES was just a read. And I don't want to make any kind of determination while I'm talking to you here because I don't want to put anybody in a, a painful situation. It's, it's still unfolding with the CPI number. Dollar index is coming off of its February 9th low. I'm not saying it's re reversed, but I'm just watching that right now. You can pull that up on TradingView with the symbol DXY. It's free to see it. All right, we're going to drop down until one minute chart because we've cleared out buy side. Let's see what we get here for lower time frames in here. Now, looking at this as a new trader, you know, when I first started trading, this is kind of like what non-farm payroll would look like. <laughs> it would be really big movement. We don't see it so much anymore today. I mean, once in a while we get a little bit of movement, but it's kind of become a very boring 
news event. So notice we have this low and this high here. We dip down below it. So I'm watching to see do we surge. We would have to show a really meaningful run above the consequent encroachment of this wick for me to feel bullish for that 4208. Implying that like if, if this was any other market day, I would still be on my hands sitting, not doing anything yet. There's nothing in here for me to, to act on. And to be honest with you, on a day like this, you want to see time between the release of 8.30 CPI number all the way to the opening at 9.30 and see how they use that opening range when the opening bell rings at 9.30 New York time. Any other day, I would use this as a bullish breaker. I know I shouldn't be talking like this because some of you are going to force to take this as an invitation to get in here and trade. And I'm not, don't want, I don't want you to do that. But I want you to compare and contrast when we're looking at days that aren't under heavy manipulation, like we're seeing with CPI. You'll see me t talk about it, call it, and it'll react a specific way like we would expect. But in here, I want you to study does the broker, does that breaker rather, provide a reason for price to want to go higher after being in it like it is here. We have a small little volume imbalance that could dig down into that again. <clears throat> and that's candle right here is the full Monty on that buy side and balance sell side efficiency, meaning that this is as far as you would want to see it really, really deep retracement inside of. And again, for the yahoos that are here listening, oh, he's getting it wrong. No, I said it would need to go above the consequent encouragement for me to be bullish. And it would need to do so with speed and distance. And time, it ain't 930. The opening bell hasn't rang yet. So this is all pre-session building a narrative. What would be likely to See price do. Just because you're in front of the chart doesn't mean it's time to enter. So far, this looks like it was a run on that 41.70. I'm just watching that dollar. Bond market's not really giving me any kind of help either, so just sitting still. This is a good day for a lot of people to lose money trying to do something. But I would, when I was a younger guy, when I first started, and I discovered the non-farm payroll was a thing that repeated every month. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. Not that this is non-farm payroll, but the volatility that this type of event brings in, where there's a lot of movement and price action. You, you start thinking to yourself, that's the day I want to trade. And every other day, we don't want to trade. When that's not true, <laughs> you want to trade every other day and not trade those days. Because those days are the ones that most likely are going to hurt you. But because they move around a lot. You think that that's what you want to be a participant in. And you can, you can get hurt really, really easy in these days. All right, for you Forex traders, look at your uh, Euro 15 minute time frame. You see how we worked both sides, buy side and sell side. Same thing with uh, pound, pound. Has liquidity at 21.35. So one, 1.2135. There's sell side below that. Dollar looks like it could run back up into its gap on 
Just give me a second. I'll tell you where it is. You look at Monday, 1900, and Monday, 1800, that separation between that on your hourly chart for DXY. You pull that up on TradingView. It'll be the TBC symbol. A dollar could gravitate back up to that. And that would put a little bit of pressure on foreign currencies. And if they can drop down, just be careful with that 121.35 sell side on pound dollar. It's too smooth, in other words. Doesn't mean it's going there, but I, that's what I'm looking at. Euro is still in the middle of its range. It's as cleared out its sell side. It's actually taken out like three different levels of short term lows on the 15 minute time frame. Pound dollar has not done that. Pound dollar has only returned back down into. And I realize I'm not showing you a chart. I'm, I'm trying not to move around too much because I'm not proficient with using this OBS. And I'm afraid if I pull up a chart, and I've done it before in the live streams where I'm talking about something that you couldn't see the chart. So you all can pull these charts up on your own. Fifty fifty still. Anybody's market today so far. Buyers or, or sellers. They can both be argued. I wouldn't want to be a buyer though. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be going long. So between euro dollar and cable, so British pound versus US dollar and euro dollar, if you look at the relationship between your 15 minute time frame lows, the 15 minute candle we're in right now, cable was unwilling to make that lower low. So that's SMT divergence. And I'm waiting to see some kind of confirmation in dollar that would support lower dollar. And then that would open the gates for higher prices on foreign currency. And that would give way for another run above the 4170 in a quarter level for ES. Bonds are still not any help at all. That's what's that's what's causing the, the delay here. Also, they're going to try to keep it inside this range, most likely <clears throat> before we get into the 930 opening bell for equities. So we have about 45 minutes before we probably start moving more freely. Unfortunately, there's no point for me to work with as a turning point intraday. So it looks like dollars trying to push higher. A higher dollar is risk off. That means it's easier for equities and foreign currencies to drop. So I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but I'm just giving you a read as I'm watching it. <clears throat> if I start toggling through charts and such, when you can do that on your own, open up uh, windows on your browsers with the dollar index. 
and NASDAQ and Forex. So I'm measuring risk on risk off across a wide array of different instruments. And I'm using the bond market as well. So I'm looking at the five year, the 10 year and the 30 year. And I'm looking for divergences in their yields to kind of like confirm or negate a price run as we see these fluctuations in the ES and or Forex. I'm looking for that confirmation that what I'm seeing in those instruments is being seen in the bond yields. And you can look at my core content and understand what I mean by that. Too much of a topic for a live stream. For NASDAQ traders, look at your February 14th, 08 colon 38 one minute candle. There's fair value got there. Extend that out in time. <clears throat> if you look at the lows on YMH2023, that's your Dow futures. The lows on Dow versus the lows on NASDAQ. NASDAQ failed to make a lower low as Dow did. That's SMT. It's bullish near term, very short term. It doesn't mean much at all right now, but I'm just making an observation and sharing it with you. Watch this gap in here. If we get above it, if it acts as support, we'll try to see if there's any reason for it to get back up into those highs. Note these lows here in ES, and I'll pull up NASDAQ. Keep your eye right here, okay? We're looking at those lows. See the same low? It's higher here. And now watch when we pull up the YM. See how it went lower? So that's divergence. I call it SMT, smart money technique, smart money tool, whatever. I've never settled on the real name that would stick with it. So we just call it SMT. So my focus on ES is this gap here. And I'm watching, do we get above it? and treat it as support and then try to run back into that 4170 and a quarter level or does it fail to even get through it at all and run lower either way i think this initial uh fear of a gap is going to be influential going forward into the first part of this morning one way or the other it's going to be a factor So we have SMT divergence at the lows on euro dollar versus British pound. So pound was only make a lower low with euro. The dollar index was unable to make a higher high, respectively, as euro made that lower low. So there's a USDX SMT divergence. So there's more fuel for it to want to go higher, lower with dollar higher with euro, higher with pound, and potentially higher on the indices here. All right, so we're on the other side of that fair value gap. So now what was the what was the procedure I just gave you a little while ago as a reminder? If the imbalance is bullish, you want to see it stay above its midpoint, which is consequent encouragement. Its most sensitivity should be at the high of it or the first quadrant from the high. So does it come back down at all? It may not need to come back down. It may just keep on going higher, but if it does trade down here, we want to watch and observe any sensitivity on that. So 
Oops, don't want to do that one. Good grief. There we go. So you're going to watch the consequent encroachment, the midpoint from consequent encroachment to the high of that shaded area and the high in that little bit of a range. We've hit it here, and we'll see, does it have a willingness to want to run to 41.70 and a quarter? Now, it's not a trade, okay? I'm not telling you to buy it, but what you're doing is, is when you're watching the tape like this, you're looking for these types of things to form, and it gives you feedback in terms of reading what price is likely to do next. If this were, for instance, say it was another day, it wasn't CPI, and say it was after 9.30, and we had worked off the first few minutes of trading, and now we're in a better position to trust a scenario. These instances here, I would like to see it stay in the upper portion of that shaded area. It's already showing a willingness to not want to do that here, which is typical because we still have time before we get to 9.30, and it's just gyrating back and forth, chopping up, getting people in, getting people stopped out, so you have to be mindful of that. But if I ever describe a fair value gap that I like, what my eye goes to if I'm bullish, I'm looking at the high of the fair value gap, which would be represented like this. Okay, so that's the fair value gap high, the consequent encroachment, and then the midpoint between that. Okay, so there's the very, very specific three levels. Three levels. And if I buy, and I'm not suggesting you should be doing that here, I'm just giving you real-time commentary and what I mean by watching the fair value gaps. If it trades down to it here, and I'm bullish, right? The idea would be I would enter there, and then if it goes down to the midpoint between the consequent encroachment and the high of that, I would use that also as an entry. And if it touches the midpoint, I would use that as an entry. But I would not want to see it trade like it's doing here, because if I had a stop loss, like for instance, when it started going through the midpoint when it was trading right there, that right there would have stopped me from saying, okay, my stop will be right below here. Why? Because it's below the fair value gap and that's the low outside of that gap. So my stop would be there. And once it got to this point here, I would kill it. I would abort the trade and I wouldn't feel bad about it. I wouldn't second guess. I wouldn't worry about it. It'd be done because holding on to it and watching it get stopped out when you know that your procedures and processes tell you it's not likely to be favorable for you to hold on to it. That's why you have rules. You have to have rules of engagement. You have to know what you're looking for, what you don't want to see. And they have to be routine. They have to be written down. They have to be understood. And you know them like the back of your hand. And only then do you get to the point where, where most of you ask me questions like, how do I know? How do I trust? How do I know it's going to, it's just a matter of experience and seeing it over and over again, much in the same way when you see things that you don't want to see you trust that that's better for you to exit the marketplace and you're not worried about missing out if you would have stayed in. It's better. As soon as you see something that's problematic, you're never wrong. Okay. Listen to me. You are never wrong trying to preserve capital. See that little, little volume of balance here we hit. Small little volume of balance in there. Went right up into it there after we left this fair value gap. So now watch consequent encroachment down here on this wick. You never are wrong by trying to preserve capital because that's, that's your number one responsibility because without money that's like you can have the nicest sports car or a nice luxury ride vehicle that money can buy if you don't have gas in the tank you're not going anywhere in it okay and you're a scrub sitting on the side of the road in a car that can't move nobody's inter interested or impressed by that so if you don't have any money or equity in your account you can't do anything. So your number one rule is preserve capital, not multiply it as fast as I can, not what's the largest leverage I can push on my funded account or over leverage in my real money account that's not funded. Hang on one second. I thought I had to plug in. <clears throat> so we've already went down the consequent encouragement to previous week, new week opening gap. That's what this level is here. The high of it, the midpoint of it, and the low of it. 
And then down here was that shaded fair value gap from the 15 minute time frame. So that way, if you lost your orientation where you are, that's what we're seeing. Now we have that small little gap between these two candles here, which is below consequent encroachment of that shaded blue area, which is that gap I said is going to be influential in price action this morning. So there are orders below here for people that are trying to buy it. There's sell stops below that. And then we have consequent encroachment. It doesn't necessarily have to take that low out, but it can trade back down to that low, which would still clean up any sell side below here. Push the button. You, I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, he just told me a short. I did not say that. <laughs> I did not say that. A rally above that fair value gap, we go back into that same protocol. Do we see it support? price at the high, the midpoint between the high and consequent encroachment and consequent encroachment. So there are boundaries, there are barriers, there are levels that you're very specific about. It's it's finite. It's not ambiguous. It's not a supply and demand zone where you, don't, you, you where's the, where's the order, where's the level you're trying to trade on? It's not specific. So when I teach imbalances and fair value gaps and such, SIBIs, buy side imbalance, those side efficiencies, <clears throat> buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiencies, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiencies, either or. Uh, look how we came up into that consequent encroachment here. So this small little gap right in here has been repriced to. Do we trade below this for sell side? Or do we ramp through and then treat this as a support? Where we've tried to go lower, it showed no respect of it when it went above it the initial time. Trading above it, coming back down, that would be viewed as a reclaimed fair value gap. Much like you expect a resistance broken turn support, imbalances are many times treated that way. Imbalances is the difference between this candle's low and that candle's high, which is one little pass through. It's, in, it's imbalanced, meaning it needs to have delivery on the outside, which is what you see here. It went all the way back up to and through this small imbalance but there's nothing up here that's an imbalance which means if we were to see it rally up and it say it finds support here and starts to rally through this high because there's no imbalance in all of this price action above this high it implies what that it's likely to go to the rejection block which is the highest of close closing price here consequent encroachment of the wick here and then new high for the buy side that's what i'm framing but because we're below this fair value gap, I told you it's influential right now. Fair value gap, we've gone up into it, consequent encroachment, sell side's been tagged here. Your focus on the downside is consequent encroachment, 41.35 and a quarter, which would clean up the sell side below these lows here for anyone that wanted to do what? Long. When you're watching price like this, it frees you up about being right or wrong, which unfortunately you're trying to press yourself into that laboratory experiment with a demo account or worse, you're trying to do it with real money or a funded account and discovering that you don't know how to trade. You don't know how to manage yourself and you're reckless and you're impatient and you're just impulsive. You just want to do something and nobody wants to go get drunk and get behind the wheel of their car to see what they can do. Nobody in a right mind wants to do that, but that's the equivalent of what you're doing when you go with live money or funded account and you don't know how to trade. Let's see what happens. You, know, I might make it home alive. No, you don't want that. Small little gap in here. Does it want to go above that? If it does, treat this as an area to watch and see if it supports it to take us back up into this. Otherwise, if it rejects it and goes lower, your eye should go here. Anybody could do this, ICT, this ain't trading. You're right, it's not trading, it's tape reading. This is where you get your insights on finding the setups that you love, that you like, that makes sense to you. 
retest back to that Fairway Gap low, the blue shaded area. So far, still no luck in determining any kind of bias through bonds or dollar. So we're still stuck in this chop, which is why you have to wait until 930. Keep your eye on where I said sell side was. Right glove here and consequent encouragement. touch this 4146 even level. I wanted to see it touch that and then reprice down the consequent encouragement, dig into the lower quarter of that range. Remember this is the old previous new week opening gap. So 4137 and a quarter, 4135 and a quarter, those specific levels. On the downside, should it reach a little bit further, lower? Those are the ones to watch. No trades still, in case you guys are wondering. No entries, no setups, nothing here. It's still aimless. <clears throat> repriced to the high end of the previous week's new week opening gap. So this is the old high end of that, not this present week's gap. It's the previous week. So two Sundays ago, where we opened to in relationship to the prior week, Friday. So from that 41.46, to consequent encouragement at 41.40 and a quarter, that's five handles. As a new startup, a student that's trying to look for something that repeats, uh, like a little cookie cutter, something that you look for for your first little trophy, your little cookie for reward of studying price action, that's what I try to teach my students to look for. And it's so easy to see them throughout the course of an entire day when the markets are more likely to move one-sided. Whereas right now, this is typical. We're, we're waiting for the opening session at 9.30, which is 24 minutes and 30 seconds or so away. I was hoping it's going to give me a little bit better structure than it's giving me because I, I have to close at 945 with you and then go do my things with my wife and my son because we have holidays today. So I could at least give you something as I leave. But I'm not certain I have anything yet, but that can change at 930.
step right away from watching the new week opening gap at 4146, barring a day event like this, but just simple little runs on algorithmic levels. 4146 booked to 4140 and a quarter, even went below it. There's six handles there. Five is in it. So it doesn't look like much because it's not much. And I'm sure that you, know, those young guys in here with your egos, you're looking at that. Pff, I could do that as you, I'm getting this and that. That's I'm not. You're not an audience. <laughs> okay, I'm talking to the people that have no idea what they're doing. What are they? What should they be looking for? What's their first objective to look for? Continuous delivery of an objective or target. Something that repeats easy. Five handles. It re, it feels rewarding. Now look at the reaction we're getting off of that consequent encouragement. Do we run aggressively back up into this area here? That's what I'm weighing out. Do we see it quickly get there? If we get to it and through it, then go back to watching this upper half of that. For the, for, I'm sorry, for the fair value gap. I would have preferred rather to see it go through these short-term lows though, if I was being honest with you, because if we were to do that, reject and then come back above this fair value gap, we would have several factors in there that would lend potential support which would be the old fair value gap here, specifically the consequent encouragement, the upper quarter, and the high. Then also, how far we go above, we could treat this as a bullish breaker, which it's not right now, because we haven't had the low, lower low. Came back up into this little fair value gap here. Now does it reprice for that sell side here? When you strip away your observation of price in relationship to indicators or patterns, like don't don't look at price with patterns. Look at where orders would be resting below old lows, above old highs. Where's the market have porous price action, like we just saw here, between this candle's low and this candle's high? There's that one little section on that down close candle. It went right up into that, right in here, and then repriced lower. Look at the bodies respecting the old new week opening gap. The wicks do the damage, but the bodies are telling you the story. So what's down here? Sell side. How far can it go? It can go down to 41.37 and a quarter, which is between this consequent encroachment and the low of the previous new week opening gap or 4135 and a quarter, which is the consequent encouragement midpoint of this wick here, because the algorithm sees it as a gap. So it's likely to reprice that price or 4137 and a quarter. Either one would clean up this little area here. And then we would see, does it want to accelerate to the downside? If it does, that makes the case for this having been the real move for CPI, the cleared buy side, traders are, are at that point trapped net long, and they're just going to keep repricing lower, not letting them off that hook. And smart money would have accumulated shorts up here. It's kind of like what I was talking about earlier. Where I want to see, does it go up all that and reject? And so far we've seen that, but now we're in that point here tells the rest of the story. Do we drive through this? for continuation lower and i'm watching dollar as we're talking so dollars showing some interest after taking that february 9th low out as i mentioned forex traders be mindful of again that uh pound dollar 1.2135 sell side liquidity if it trades back down there that erases all of the bullish smt and there's your delivery here and I don't want to make it sound like that's a big deal, okay? But let me tell you something. When I first started looking at price and I started seeing these types of moves where I could see a fair value gap to reprice to here to, to here to that level down here, when it started like it just did here, that to me was so rewarding 
because it wasn't a random thing. It was something that I was scientifically measuring based on previous experiences, specific levels, not, you know, some contrived indicator or theory that it should do this, it shouldn't do that. It wasn't ambiguous. It was something very finite, a very specific level because we were below the fair value gap. It should trade down into here and how far trade down into this level here. And or what's the darker line here? That's that low with a previous new week opening gap. If we break through that on the downside, then in my opinion, as long as we remain below the consequent encroachment level, we're bearish on the day. So that's that's how I would use all this information. It would need to get back above the high of the previous new week opening gap, which is this specific level at 4146, for me to even consider probing the long side. So hopefully that kind of like gives you how the process I'm framing a narrative, which leads to a bias for the session. So everything has a reason. There's a place for everything. There's a logic behind it. It's not contrived. It's not conjecture. It's not cherry picked. It's a simple process of looking at certain things and weighing out what is most favorable and what's most likely not to occur. And in the beginning, there's so many things that you have to consider it feels overwhelming, which is why you have to have someone that knows how to do it walk with you for a year. And that's why I'm here. I mean, I'm trying to give you that insight. Can't put a price tag on it. All right, so about 17 minutes until the opening bell. Can you guys give me another audio check? I know it's not as good as the audio probably was earlier, but is, can you still hear me? I'm asking you to give me a five by five on audio on Twitter. <clears throat> Thank you, Arcax. I think that's how I pronounce it. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So there's the low of the previous week. New week opening gap. And now we're getting into that 15 minute fair value gap that I mentioned from yesterday. So the things that you would be concerned about here now is the early session low. Do we trade through that and reject and then start to climb higher? It would need to get above the previous new week opening gaps high, which is this level right here. So in plain terms, I'm expecting lower prices unless we are above 4146. And then once we're above 4146, it doesn't mean I'm just buying it. I'm then switching my bias to bullish. And then I'd be looking for this fair value gap to offer a, a reason for price getting through it and then find some support. So we go back to previous PD arrays and treat them exactly what you're taught to do with ambiguous support resistance and diagonal trend lines, which are not objective. They're sub completely subjective. Whereas an imbalance like this, it stands out because all of this back and forth price action in here, there's no imbalance there. So when it stands out like that, that's a finite objective place for you to be observing and measuring versus what diagonal trend line do you use? Which which key lows and which key highs do you draw a trend line from? And I mentioned this before. You know, if we were in a, a large audience setting and I gave a random selection of multiple people come up and gave them a time frame of a chart, any chart, any, any market, invariably they're all going to have different trend lines if they're not allowed to see what either one is doing. If they can't copy because they're all going to be afraid that they're going to do it wrong, so let's stay with the majority, which is why traders lose. Because they're, they're using the herd mentality of the analysis concepts. Not understanding that the markets are algorithmic and they're rebooking and repricing and delivering based on what I'm showing you here. These are very finite levels. They're, they're easy to derive from your own data and it's free. It's like you don't need any kind of service. You don't need any kind of 
you know, software, package the pie, you, nothing. You just need to open high, low, and close and understand time. So dollar looking a little strong in here. That's favorable. My eye keeps going to that cable. <laughs> 12130, 12135. Uh, if it accelerates on the downside, you want to take a look at the fair value gap. And there's some of you like, can you talk about Forex? We ain't heard nothing about Forex in a long time, ICT. February 13th, the 945 candle for the 15 minute time frame on pound dollar. You should have that annotated on your chart. Again, it's February 13th of 2023. On your 15 minute time frame, look at the candle at time 09 colon 45. So 945 on the 13th of February, 15 minute time frame for cable. You want to take that, extend that to the right. And that would put you in the vicinity of 121.10 or thereabouts. It's just a it's just a factor for a draw on liquidity for me if we see it crush the 121.30 sell side. If it, if it ramps up and goes through it, not ramps up in direction because it would be going down if it went down there. But I like the 121.10, 121.08 and a half level for pound dollar. For ES, the only thing we're working with here is we just traded up into the lower quarter level, which is that one, I'm um, sorry, the 41.37 in the quarter level. Let me go back to showing you. Here is the midpoint. And here is the low. And this is the previous week's new week opening gap. So remember I was showing you the 41.37 in the quarter level. It was a, a draw to get to these sell side liquidity pools. And then the consequent encroachment of that wick, which was 41.35 and a quarter. So now because we went down through into this old new week opening gap low, we retraced. Was there any imbalance in here? No. So what level are we looking at? What am I, what's my eye looking at? It's looking at the difference between the midpoint and the low of that old new week opening gap. These two levels here. My eye is splitting that in half. Many times I'm rounding it, which is why sometimes you see me doing partials and such, or I'm pyramiding. I might be off on the actual high by a quarter of a point or maybe two ticks. I don't care because I'm using the logic, which is essentially this 41.37 and a quarter level. We went up to it here. So now I'm watching, does it want to repel price from actually, actually hitting that? Do we accelerate to the downside? Everything's bearish on this until we get above 41.46. Now, doesn't that make sense? You may not like all of the extra things I'm describing and, and having to rely on other things, but that's just something you're going to have to grow into. I mean, the strongest technical analysis is going to have intermarket relationships. If you're doing your trading on just the chart you're looking at and nothing else, you're literally standing with your nose against the tree trying to see the forest. You can't see everything like that. It, it, it will be very frustrating for you because you want it to be easy just w watch your one chart okay I, I guess in a lot of ways you know everybody would want that i did but then i realized that you have to constantly look at other things and they're all going to be influenced or influential to your trading because everything's connected everything is connected so you might be hearing me say earlier i'm looking at the bond market and you're thinking well, I don't want to look at the bond market. Why would I want to look at the bond market? Because the interest rates are the real fundamental driver if you want to look at long-term macro. Long-term macro influences over the marketplace is going to be driven primarily over interest rates, whether you're trading in currencies or whether you're trading in equities, because the interest rates is how commerce is done. The lending and borrowing of money and the, the ease of getting that or the cost of getting it is going to be an impact to all measures of commerce. And since we're dealing with currencies for Forex trading and or equities for stocks, it goes without saying that you need to have that finger on the pulse, understanding what interest rates are doing. And I taught all of that in the core content, so you don't need to ask me on you know, Twitter and think because it's already there. <laughs> core sellers hate him. <laughs> 
ICT. All right, so we're about uh, eight minutes or so away from the opening bell. Now, at this time, what I like to do is I like to refer to where we are a couple minutes before the opening bell at 930. And down here on trading view, you see this little ETH, that's electronic hours. I like to toggle that to regular trading hours. Okay. And this is where we were yesterday at session close. Okay, so that price, you wanna drop a line from there and you want this to be really bold. It's gonna really stand out so that way you don't miss it. You can't misinterpret what it is and then toggle right back to electronic trading hours. So now what is that suggesting here? Here's that line now. Remember, 41.50 and a quarter. Let's go back to regular trading hours. 41.50 and a quarter is yesterday's closing price. Fifteen minutes after four. Okay, that's like the, the bell ring. Yes, markets still trade. It, it goes a little bit further than that. But we're not concerned about that right now. I'm showing you how to look at how I'm internalizing price action at the open. The open is 930 when the, when the bell rings, you see it on CNBC or financial news networks. Ding, ding, ding. The bell rings. Everybody's applauding like they did something. The go back to electronic trading. We're trading here now. So what does that mean? We're trading at a discount relative to yesterday's trading. So the retail trader sees what? A gap lower. In response to where we closed yesterday to where we are right now. So because of that, whenever you see that difference between that, it is a likelihood that the market will likely pull up and try to gravitate towards that. Not immediately always, not all the time will it do this. It's just something that you're going to be measuring once the market starts trading at 930. The opening range, when, I, when I'm talking about the opening range, Okay, this is for your notes, because if you're not taking notes, you're not doing this right. When you hear me talk about, okay, we've got to watch the opening range. What what time is the opening range? Well, it's from 930 to traditionally about 10 o'clock. So it's about 30 minutes. I give it about 30 minutes, meaning inside that 30 minutes, I'm trying to measure the willingness for price wherever we open up at to get back to the previous session close. If it's a gap down opening, in those first 30 minutes, I'm, I'm trying to determine, was there any willingness to want to see the algorithm reprice back to that level? If there is no immediate dire need for it to get back up to it, in this case, that means we're extremely bearish. And then I can turn my attention to deeper discount objectives that would be on a 15 minute time frame, the hourly chart or a daily. And I would use those ideals or ideas to frame a bias. So when you when you hear me talk about opening range, it's specific to about a 30 minute time window. But I'm looking at that first 30 minutes to see if there's any interest for us to reprice back up to the previous session close. And unless you have this on your charts, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a day trader's little secret thing. OK, they, they the traders that know how to do this, they're not going to want to talk about it openly because you know, it's just one of their little edges. But I've taught it for a long time and it's not it's not mine. OK, it's just a simple little thing that it's a quirky little nuance that price tends to do. When everything went to electronic trading, it just so happens that these are some of the things that are offered with algorithmic delivery. It's a form of fair value. Getting back to where we were yesterday. Think of it as support broken now turn resistance. Well, it has to get up there to be acting as resistance, right? If it fails to make any meaningful attempt to get up there, that is an underlying weakness that spells further decay for price to reach lower. In that case, we would want to see a trade through the midpoint or a consequent encroachment of the shaded area, which is that yesterday fair value gap. If it trades below this level here with the speed, we would expect it to go below it and outside of that shaded area is low end. 
but we always have to give that first couple minutes at the opening bell at 930 New York time. Does it want to retrace? Now, with that in mind, let's look at, let's just play devil's advocate for a moment because we still have a couple minutes. From where we are right now, let's assume that the bell was ringing at 930 at this moment. Looking back, there's only this small little imbalance right here, which would be just above consequent encroachment of the new week opening gap of the previous week. This is why I told you you have to have a chart that you save in your in your platform that you only have annotated previous week, new week opening gap for the last four weeks. So you're going to have always referring to the one we are trading in right now for the week of trading. You're looking at the charts and the previous four weeks. By having that, you're going to have an X-ray view of how the algorithm is going to refer back to that stuff. Okay, and. I'm trying not to spoil the surprises when you do this on your own and you'll see what I mean when you see it, it's your jaw is going to drop because it's like, what the hell? You could just make a model off of that. You can build bias models and build all kinds of wonderful trading algorithms, uh, models, trading plans, patterns, setups, you know, whatever you want to call it, just on that insight alone. And no one has ever taught it to you ever. It's never been in any kind of publication, never been anything. And it's a matter of looking at this relationship that constantly falls in line with price delivery. Dollar is really muscled through its opening gap. So now you want to take your attention over to the DXY chart real quick before the opening bell. On your hourly chart, you want to have one zero three point two one eight noted and you want to have one zero three point two eight four noted so that's a that's a gap extend it out to the right we're above it now but we want to see it stay above that at this point which would support lower prices on es <clears throat> British pound is just inside a striking distance of that sell side liquidity pool I mentioned earlier. Euro dollar is really losing ground. Euro traders, you want to take a look at your 15 minute time frame. Annotate the fair value gap on February 13th at the 945 candle. 15 minute time frame, Euro dollar candle at 0945. That's your fair value gap for a discount. I feel like a friggin' DJ. ICT's mixing all the greatest hits in the new ones. <laughs> all right, just about 30 more seconds. And we should start seeing some movement in here that's more meaningful. Oh, ICT. It's going to be very expensive for me today. <laughs> I have three holidays. You can afford it. Stop bitching. All right, so we have consequent encroachment. It's breached that on ES. So watch the low end of that shaded area. So 41.22 and a quarter. You want to see it through that. Opening bells ringing. <clears throat> Look at that. Screenshot that, okay? Screenshot that for your ES. This will go up to a higher time frame and get a better frame of reference. There's our old fair value gap from yesterday. I mentioned that we want to see it stay open. That might become a factor for complete closure today. So if we accelerate through this fair value gap, then that may be where we're looking. I know we're having a lot of fun right now, but don't forget that in a couple minutes I gotta escape. <clears throat> All right.
dollar index higher. Again, I told you that with pressure. There's your clip, your debt closure from yesterday. So that's good. At least I was able to call something beforehand before I escaped it today. So you got a chance to observe how we use intermarket relationships and the market analysis, use a dollar index, use the weight of Forex because you're going to be measuring the buying and selling of foreign currency in the relationships of what? Risk on risk off. So the dollar index was my catalyst this morning telling you to watch that February 9th low. That was a turtle soup scenario. Going down there, rejecting it, we got that acceleration through. You want to look at 10380 on dollar. Look at that on your hourly chart. Uh, that's basically like the reject. Let me make sure I'm giving the right number. I'm sorry. I'm growing impatient because I know my wife's going to be coming in here <laughs> saying, are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> I'm married, folks. That's the way it is. So 103, 103.78, that's your rejection block on the hourly chart. So have that on your dollar index. That's likely where we're going to pull up to for dollar if we continuously push higher. And that would pressure the euro dollar and cable to the levels I mentioned uh, moments ago. Cable's just in striking distance of the objective I gave you. It's already smashed the uh, the sell side I gave you as a town side target. And we've completely repriced all the way to this old high. There. So now, because it's done this, you want to see, does it want to reprice back up into this fair value gap? For the bears, for people that want to sell short, you want to see it stay below the midpoint or consequent encouragement, specifically 41.28 even. As long as we remain below 41.28 even, we're looking for lower prices. And you would look for sell side below here. I'm sorry. And then over here. So as long as we're below 41.28, sell side below this low here on February 12th. And then near term sell side is below here. Okay, so that's the business. And I guess that's going to be it because I got to start packing up this show here. I do hope you found this morning's discussion over live candles and narrative building and how I look at the logic between these candles and the opening relationships and the relationship to the dollar indexed and you know, bond market. I, I didn't really have anything I could mention that would be noteworthy, but uh, for CPI, I guess this was a fruitful study because I can't push a button in front of you with it and I'm not trying to entice you all to do it. So we're retracing back into that fair value gap, as I mentioned, uh, 41.28, that's your line in the sand. So if it trades back above 41.28, it may run up above it and then come back down to 41.28 or 41.31. If it supports it and starts to rally back to 41.40, then you would expect it to trade back to 41.50 and a quarter because that's yesterday's closing price. We are still in a deep discount. Okay, and the way this is internalized is, is traders that wanna be long or want to be a buyer, they're going to be really feel comfortable with doing this because they think they're buying it really cheap. And their target would be back to yesterday's closing price at 41.15 a quarter. I'm not suggesting that's what's going to happen. I'm just telling you the framework because I'm going to be leaving you and it's something for you to observe and study. But as long as we're below 41.28, sell side liquidity and new week opening gap for this week, if it, if it gravitates back to that, you know, we're, we're going back into the chop. So hopefully that helps. I know it would have helped me as a trader, you know, when I was first starting, if I would have had this information and the logic, knowing what I'm looking for, what are you looking for as a trader? You know, what, what levels are key? What would you expect price to do around these levels? You know, what factor constitutes a sustained price run higher or lower that's what i'm that's what i'm teaching you but you can't learn that from a book 
You can't learn it from a, a, a few videos that you watch by me or anyone else. You have to see it being used daily, in, you know, day in and day out, the same type of thing, the same logic. And by conditioning, by repetition, seeing it over and over and over again, the times when it really works a lot and the times that me as the operator, I'll do it wrong. And hopefully it'll encourage you to not fear doing it wrong as a trader too. Because it's going to happen. You're going to mess up. I mean, everybody's a human being, right? So, so far, we have a speed bump on dollar index trading at the fair value gap. Look at your 15-minute time frame. 945 yesterday. Okay, that fair value gap extended out in time to the right. Let me see if I can... Give you the actual price levels, make sure you have the right ones. You should have 103.470 annotated on your dollar 15 minute time frame chart. And the low, the low at 103.530. Okay, so that's the fair value gap on the 15 minute time frame. We've already traded into it above the consequent approach and midpoint of it. So it's reasonable to see these types of things happen where it trades up into it and starts to pull off a little bit. That's completely normal. Watch that 41.28 on ES though. Remember that's the, that's the line in the sand. Look at that reaction right there. That in itself is five handles. Just trading like that, trading that consequent encouragement and then a breakdown lower. Five handles, just like that, bang. High frequency traders and high frequency algorithms do that very thing you just seen right there. That's what high frequency traders do. That when when they have these algorithms that are coming in the marketplace, bang, 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 constantly hitting the market, they're pinging off of these types of levels and getting the fluctuation that they're targeting constantly. It might be three handles, it might be two handles, but they're doing it continuously. All day long, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. That is not the algorithm or price engine that prints and books price and gravitates towards these levels I'm showing you. That's entirely something different. That's the highway. That's the highway that the high frequency algorithms and traders that are deemed smart money, they navigate on that highway, which is the algorithm that delivers price. They navigate that with their own individual algorithms that put them in and out of trades, much like an exit ramp on and off of interstate highways. Think of the main algorithm, the price engine. That's the, that's the highway, the map across the entire landscape of trading. Every one of us has different approaches to getting from one place to the next. And you can decide to get to one place to the next if you're, if you're heading south as a trader. You're heading south as a trader. You have multiple opportunities to get on that interstate, which is the algorithm delivering price lower. Your exit ramp of entry onto that highway of lower prices may differ from the one I'm interested in because I'm willing to go a little bit further out of the way or I may want to get into one earlier and risk traffic. Or you might get in an exit that gets on the interstate thinking you're going to have an easy path and all of a sudden everybody in the same time just like on the holidays, decided to get on the interstate with you. And then you're stuck in a high resistance liquidity run. <laughs> so it's a matter of personal perspective. What analogy do you like most? You know, whatever makes sense to you. And for some of you, you don't want to think there's an algorithm at all and you think everything's buying and selling pressure. That's fine. As long as you're using everything I'm showing you here and how to find these levels and the logic behind it. You can believe the fairy tale that there isn't an algorithm. That's fine. We're completely accepting the fact that you're all welcome here still. Well, folks, I just got the the evil eye. <laughs> she just uh, peeked her head in. Let me know, uh, son. You got to get off that. She didn't have to say it. I know. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm closing it up now. So that's going to be it for me this morning. Hopefully, you got something from it, usefulness. And I, obviously, you can see there's a whole lot of lines on this chart, 
and I don't have these lines, okay? You and your back testing, you must have them because that's the only way you're gonna be able to observe the things that I'm teaching you. Over time, because you'll be able to toggle through different charts and time frames, you're not gonna be trading with just one time frame. You can't look at just one time frame and know everything. You can't. You have to have an understanding of where certain things exist in price. So we're above 4128. So now watch the top of that fair value gap. Man, I gotta be careful. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Aren't I? <laughs> Remember, this is yesterday's closing price. So it's gonna to wanna to try to gravitate to that. And we've already moved down the nights uh, movement down to that old low. I'm, I'm sorry, old high now. So this is a key level. Sell side's building below that. And I'll give you one thing to think about. If we can reprice up to this 41.50 and a quarter level and say it breaks down and you have shift on market structure, they may attack this low later on in the day. So knowing only what I have in front of me right now before I close up this chart, that would be a scenario that I would entertain that. I would consider it looking for an opportunity and it's only 9.42 now. So uh, that would be still something that could materialize even before the launch hour at noon. So something to study, something to observe and go back through all this and the levels we walk through. You wanna watch this video in live session uh, a few times because there's a lot of things I've talked about that I'm sure when I was talking about at the time wasn't really resonating with you. <clears throat> it wasn't really making any sense. But remember, all this price action in here, remember it was going back up to 41.37 and a quarter, which is the midpoint between consequent encroachment and the old new week opening gap low. So this is the previous week's new week opening gap high, consequent encroachment and the low. That's what these levels are. We broke through and we stayed down in the lower end, which is exactly what you want to see when you're bearish. It had no respect of wanting to go higher back to the consequent encroachment here. It was respecting what? The 41.37 and a quarter level. So what was happening here? Why was it staying sideways like that? It was allowing smart money to accumulate what? Short positions. It's controlled. It's not a lack of buyers and a lack of sellers. It's being controlled. This is all time distortion. There's a benefit of having. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she heard me going on again. <laughs> All right. I'm not trying to get a divorce. Good grief. The 4137 and a quarter level was being utilized as a, a reference point to see us trade lower. And then it went down through all of our levels in the fair value gap into the old imbalance from yesterday and into this here. This old high here. So it closed in all this inefficiency. What's this candle's high? 41, 14 and three quarters. What's the low on this candle? What is that? 41, 14. Am I saying that right? 41, 14. And the high of this is. Yeah, so we went three quarters of a point deeper into this. So it completely closed in all this separation between this candle's high and that candle's low. So that imbalance there is no longer open. It's been completely filled. So watch price at 41.50. It may not get there, but that's what you want to be watching. So it's 9.45. I'm ending it. Until I talk to you tomorrow, be safe. Fifteen minute dragonfly. The only problem is typically with these sweeps, you want to put your stop loss below the candle. That stop loss is almost 20 points away. So you would most likely have to take that with lower size with a very wide stop or uh, full size with a very tight stop.
Here is the overnight fade target. Overnight fade targeted 41.42 being hit as well as VWAP. Next target would be 41.58 for that fade. Dollar coming down rapidly here. Keep an eye on the dollar. You're basically a Forex trader today. One minute buy doing a good job catching that sweep. Already long at 26. It's long almost 20 points ago. One minute bot will typically do a very good job on days like this with a wide ranging high volatility. Two of your value levels have already been hit. Next value level would be 41.62. And then the final target for the sweep would be the high, obviously, at 86. So far, VWeb being protected by the sellers, 42 to 43 on VWeb. <clears throat> You can see the tape very blue, which means the tape is thin, getting a lot of level two orders, anything above 25 to 50 contracts, seeing at least one tick of slippage here. We're still holding VWAB, but it looks like you are building buyer value above it. Some buyers pushing at 4250, 43.75. Do you guys have a gap here? I reloaded my data and it still shows a gap there. I wonder if that's a real gap. Was that 834 to 833? I don't think that's a real gap. No, there shouldn't be a gap there. <clears throat> 